Do it like. No, what are you doing? <laughs> this is 15 minutes with Uncle Russ coming to you live from. No, not from X Cafe. I'm coming from a, a town called East London. And it may as well be London in England because that's how cold it is. <laughs> yes. We, we, we arrived in South Africa a week, nearly a week ago. It is a week ago. And I want to tell you, I thought I was going to die, like from 31 to 13 degrees. So in the space of a week, I've been through all four seasons, and it's rather cold. It's this cold. Yeah, maybe, maybe only this cold. So look at this. There's my, there's my niece's daughter. So I don't know if she's like a, a grand niece or a niece niece or hands niece, his and elbows. Yeah. <laughs> Check if she's laughing at me. Oh my gosh. So I want to tell us a little story today. You want, you want a little story? Sorry about the beanie, but I am frozen, honestly. I should have rather done frozen. Hey, it would have been more appropriate. So. Rapunzel is the story about this girl with the really long hair, am I right? Yes, how's that for guesswork? And her mother decides to lock her up in this tower, this long tower. A little bit how our lives are. You know how people lock us up and they keep us in guilt and keep us in shame and they keep us in all kinds of emotional prisons, you know, like that kind of thing. Yes. So anywho... So she's up there in her little, this thing, what do you call that? Tower. Tower, Ta tower, tower. tower. And uh, the little Prince Charming comes along in his Ferrari. Now, it wasn't a Ferrari, it was on his horse. And he, he checks her out and she checks him out. You know, it's been a long time in isolation and solitude. You know, for all of those that sat for this long period of time during COVID-19, it's like the Rapunzel story, eh? Exactly the same. So what happens? She needs to get out and run away. Now, I can't remember, did she let her hair down and then he climbed up? Yes. How many of you have sneaked your boyfriends into the bedroom? <laughs> no. I must be honest, I've sneaked into a few bedrooms myself, and but, but it wasn't pleasant when the mother and the father found me there. Yes, needless to say, they didn't allow me back. I don't know why I'm such a nice guy. <laughs> so, this story is all about hair, and that reminds me of a story of a judge in the Bible called Samson. Yes. Samson was a Nazarite, so he wasn't allowed to drink, and he wasn't allowed to shave, and he wasn't allowed to cut his hair, and especially not allowed to see Philistine women, you know, and we just like Samson, sometimes we dedicate, we say we dedicate our lives to God, oh Lord, you know, you're so good, and I will follow you all the days of my life, and then you do things like sleep around, drink like a fish, take drugs, and carry on like a lunatic. Yeah, and then you wonder why your relationship, I'm not sure you, okay, sorry, apology, because you're not like that, I'm like that. Why? That is why my relationship with God isn't what it should be. And it's almost like cutting the hair and losing our strength. Hey. Yeah, yeah I thought you were going to say yes, yeah. So what is it that that has called us away or tempted us. In, in Samson's case, it was Delilah. She found out the secret of his strength and she betrayed him. How many of us have been betrayed by somebody that we loved and felt so close to and we opened up, opened up our hearts, put our defenses down, told them everything about us and then they used it against us? Hey, true story, eh? See, but here's the difference. We do not have the luxury of holding them in unforgiveness. No, we cannot. doesn't matter what people have said or thought or done to us. We have to have the same mind and heart as Christ did. When he was dying on the cross, he didn't say, Father, smack them or call down a, a legion of angels. He said, Father, forgive them. Because they don't know what they're doing. 
Are we prepared to forgive others with the same measure of forgiveness that we receive? What do you think? Ah, I got a, you got did you see the that? On the spot. <laughs> Watch it. Um, and, and you see, we only have one camera, so like, oh, what do you think? <laughs> it's not funny. Give me an answer. What did you say? What did I say? What did you say? She asked me what I said. I'm sitting right next to her. She asked me, what did you say? What did I say? I don't know. What did you say? Are you prepared to forgive others in the same measure that God's forgiven you? Of course. You have to. Oh, you know, you know we have to. Yeah. We have to glow in the dark and we have to walk on water to show how holy we are. Did you enjoy that story? So, uh, oh yeah, apologies for last week because like now, when I realized it was time to do the 7 p.m. <coughs> 15 minutes with Uncle Russ in Thailand, the time had already passed. What's the time here in South Africa? 4.39. And so apologies for last week and this week. Hopefully I'll remember to do it on time. So have a blessed weekend. Have some fun with your family. Spend time. Make time. Today I wrote on Facebook a little message called Redeeming the Time. And it's funny how we say how busy we are and we just don't have time. And God wants to give us the opportunity to redeem time with our families, to redeem time with others. Okay. Don't forget to fellowship on Sunday. Don't use COVID and any other excuse not to go and worship God. And remember what I always say. If I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. God bless and goodbye. Say bye. Bye. bye.